Well, a very warm welcome to St Mary's Church as we celebrate Epiphany, the arrival of the wise men to visit Jesus. And a very happy new year to you as well. And so we gather for our opening prayer. Almighty God, King of creation, as we gather at the start of a new year, we joyfully come to worship you. Fill us with hope and new possibilities as you lead us in the light of your love, not looking back but always moving forward and keeping our eyes on Jesus. Amen. The reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the hip. 
then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth of the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land, young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord.
A reading from Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12, Visitors from the East. Jesus was born at Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of Herod. After his birth, astrologers from the East arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is this child who is born to be king of the Jews? We observed the rising of his star and we have come to pay him homage. King Herod was greatly perturbed when he heard this, and so was the whole of Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the chief priests and lawyers of the Jewish people and put before them the question, where is it that the Messiah is to be born? At Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, and they referred him to the prophecy which reads, Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are far from least in the eyes of the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a leader to be the shepherd of my people Israel. Herod next called the astrologers to meet him in private and ascertained from them the time when the star had appeared. He then sent them on to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful inquiry for the child. When you have found him, report to me, so that I may go myself and pay him homage. They set out at the king's bidding, and the star which they had seen at its rising went ahead of them until it stopped above the place where the child lay. At the sight of the star they were overjoyed. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and bowed to the ground in homage to him. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned home another way. Shall we pray? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, searching, looking, finding something or someone in an unexpected place. Surely that is one of the themes of Epiphany. For we find in our Matthew reading today, these wise men traveling from the east, searching for the Messiah, for the light of lights, for the King of Kings, for the one who is going to come and redeem his people. And we find them searching in a place you might expect. They go to Jerusalem where they encounter Herod. If you go back to the Isaiah reading, Isaiah 60, we hear that Jerusalem will become the place where people will travel to find the light of God. The prophet was imagining a time when Jerusalem, though it had been bombed out, though it had been overcome due to the exile many, many years before Jesus, he was imagining that Jerusalem would be the place where God would work. And indeed, God did work. But not in this instance, not in the way that Herod was expecting. Herod gathers his wise men, his scholars, his Old Testament experts, and asks them, where is this Messiah? And of course, they don't point to the Isaiah reading that focuses on Jerusalem. Instead, they draw attention to the reading from Micah, where Bethlehem, Bethlehem, though it is the least, will become the place where God will do a new thing. The wise men who have travelled this journey have found themselves about nine miles in the wrong place. They've followed the sat-nav and it's gone a bit wrong. They haven't quite got it into their heads where that star will end up. And they expect, they expect as many would have expected, that God would do new and remarkable things through Jerusalem, through this city of great influence. And yet, in this moment, at this time, it's actually Bethlehem, little Bethlehem, vulnerable, 
unimportant Bethlehem. And the wise men get redirected. They get sent back on their way. Find the child, says Herod. Bring him back to me so I may worship him. Yeah, right. Now, instead, they are to go on their journey and find that God is at work at the most unexpected places. And for me, it is the essence of Epiphany, of the unveiling of God in God's majesty, being present in vulnerability and fragility, out of love and compassion for us. And so for me, at least, one of the most beautiful songs that encapsulates this is How Many Kings. And rather than say anything more, I'm just going to hand over to Tom, who will play it for us. Loving God, though we cannot see you, your love surrounds us, and you promise to hear us as we pray in faith. We give thanks for the blessings of the past year and give thanks for the strength you have given us in the difficult time. As we begin this new year, we ask for a deeper awareness of your presence among us. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We bring to mind the worldwide Christian church, both leaders and people, those who are worshipping freely and those who have to worship in secret. Help us to renew our faith and direct us to accomplish our will and purpose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to mind the troubled areas of the world where corruption, injustice, violence and war ruin lives and damage whole societies. Pour out your spirit of renewal and cleansing and give wisdom for change to those in authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call to mind our families, friends and neighbours, giving thanks in times of joy and celebration. We bring to you also the difficult relationships, the heartbreaks, the worries we all have. We remember the family members who are far away and our elderly loved ones in residential care who may not have had any visitors, the children who do not have loving homes and the young people trying to find their way in very uncertain times. We bring to mind those who have died and their loved ones who grieve. Father, we, your family, thank you for the promise that your loving arms will be around us today and in the years to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. And so may God the Father, who led the wise men by a star to find the light of light, 
the Christ, the Messiah. May he lead you on your pilgrimage to find Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>